after being woken by a sound, I opened my eyes with a measure of reluctance. Turning my head to the left, I find the, find the rain outside sweeps against the windows loudly. Sprays after wind blow and sprays lashes against the glass as if trying to, it's hardest to make up the summer's previous heat. I sit up in the futon holding the back of my neck and try to subdue my pain from my awkward sleeping position. By all accounts, I should be lamenting the turn in the weather, given that this is our last day here. The events of yesterday refuse to stop flooding into my mind, though. The feeling of holding Lily's crying body in my arms. The rush of lust and hormones that flowed through us that we spent the night together. It seems almost futile to try and rationalize everything that happened. In an attempt to distract myself, I groan and lean over to retrieve my bag without standing. Pulling out one bottle after another, I take the daily regimen's worth of pills from their containers and swallow them without further ado. I took a surprisingly short amount of time to get used to swallowing pills without water. That's it, I suppose the same thing goes for getting used to living in a school for disabled students. Remembering Yamaku, I become all the more grateful for having the chance to get away, even if it's just the shortest of times. I appreciate the chance to spend time along with, alone with Oli and Anako, away from the bustle of school, and even considering the last, the latest complications. I never thought I'd say this, but the idea of living away from the city is a nice, tranquil area is an inviting one. It's a thought that barely a year ago would have seemed simply ludicrous. A flash of pink, no doubt Hanako's gown, peeks from around the corner, realizing I must look a sight since I've just woken up. I slap the raining pills into my mouth and run a hand through my hair. Good morning, Sal. Back. Back. Go. I reply to her completely, forgetting that I'm in the middle of swallowing a particularly large pill. Coughing and spluttering, I violently gag on it. Ah, it's Sal! After spluttering loudly and tapping my chest a couple of times to force it down, I managed to recover. I'm fine. Sorry, I forgot I was swallowing. Sorry, I didn't mean to. I held my hand up, gesturing to for Anako to stop. I gagged. It's my fault. Morning, Anako. He pauses a moment before bowing in reply. I'm sorry, Anako. Walking, no staggering. Walking, no staggering behind. Naku is a familiar figure of Lily, also dressed in her pajamas, with her eyes full of sleep and hair bedrag bedraggled. She's decided to be behold. Hi, Lily. Good morning, Miss Sal. For a while, the silence hanged in there as neither of us know what to do. Given the, what happened last night, we both have more than enough reason to be finding the situation awkward. Just how are we meant to react to meeting each other after something like? That. The best course of action would probably be to talk to Lily alone to set things in order. Um, I'll start making breakfast. Lily evidently catched him on to my train of thought. I'll help. Hanako, can you set the table? She nods, her head disappearing in the cupboard as she quickly goes after a assigned task. Does Hanako know? Does she know? I rub a little more sleep out of my eyes as I wander over to the fridge and take out some milk. I lay grabs various brightly colored boxes from some of the lower cupboards to my, si on my, to my side. Is it just me or is it like... Are all the colors like washed out? It's not... Is, did they do that because it's raining? When we, wake, when we make the rather bland looking meal, I whisper somewhat. More quick, quieter than usual, knowing Lily's hearing, she won't have any trouble catching what I say. Are you okay, Lily? After last night? What What did they do last night? I wonder. Hmm. If she was staggering instead of walking, I wonder what they did. She gives a delicate nod, her expression weak. Though her tiredness surely plays a part, she seems genuinely unsure about what's happened between us, and how to move ahead. I can't say I blame her, considering my feelings are the same. I'm sorry, Asal. I wasn't thinking straight yesterday. I never th stopped to consider you or Nako, and I even went as far as... She's winding herself up, winding herself up. With her hands and her voice both tightening, I give her a gentle bump to try and line up the situation. 
You don't have to apologize. I said I liked you as well, after all. But I... As her composure begins to falter, it becomes obvious there's no alternative. Turning to Lily, I gently embrace her tall frame. She offers no resistance at all, thankfully pulling back just from the edge of their emotions. Despite our reassuring embrace lasting only a matter of seconds, I know it's an awkward wordlessly watching. The plate in her hand hovers inches above the table, her actions halted midway by the sight. Dude, they're getting a little awkward. Clatter of utensils against the plates is the only sound to be heard as we silently eat. Whereas before only the two of us may have been unsure of ourselves, the entire situation has changed. After weeks of blissful friendship, whirling away from the days with shared meals and chatter with little meaning, the relationship of Lily and I know that all of us has irreversibly changed. I can't take this. Lily. She saw me nod, gently laying her spoon into the plate in front of her. Neither of us know exactly how we regard each other, let alone how Nanako would view us. This might seem a brat, but I've confessed to us how. For a moment, Hanako looked almost confusedly pres confused precisely to the reaction I thought she would have. She eventually nods, her spoon still in her mouth as she does. Did you accept? I did. <laughs> no. Oh. She gives a small smile. She gives a smile so large and so earnest. I find myself blushing. I think it's the brightest I've ever seen her expression look. And I'm happy. I'm really, really happy. Fuck. I'm sorry for not telling you anything about it before. Things have been... Nako shakes her head from side to side. Empathetically. Apparent forgetting in her rush that Lily really couldn't possibly notice. She begins fiddling with her fingers, looking a little more nervous than she did before. To be honest, I began to think you might like each other a while ago. At first I didn't really know what to think about it, but I... I decided in the end, if my friends are happy, then I'm happy. I was really glad to have another friend when we met as Hal, so you finding love through him is even better, right? A feeling of relief at her acceptance of a relationship falls over me like a wave. The same happens totally judging by her expression. So, <laughs> fuck. I don't know if I should have done the leaves right after it, Knuckles. Thank you, Anako. I really appreciate you being so understanding. I feel so guilty. I feel so guilty. Lily's voice still sounds ap slightly apologetic, or at least unsure. This doesn't escape Hanako, who appears lost in thought for a few moments before turning to me. Sal, do you mind if me and Lily go outside for a bit? Uh, no. Feel free. Even though it's raining. Hanako? Oh fuck. What? It's raining. Hanako gets up from her seat, taking Lily's hand, almost dragging her from the table in her excitement. Considering Lily's typical slow and steady pace, Hanako's haste makes her footing awkward, and she almost loses her balance a couple of times. Hanako <laughs> sounds so happy. It's pretty amusing, it's like leaving me wordless as I watch them disappear out of the door. It's only now that I realize that the pain stopped, the rain stopped. No. Oh being replaced by a sky, seemingly all the move more vivid and bright to make up for the morning's drab gray expanse. For Nako, this must have been a pretty big, pretty big revelation. Lily and I are really the only people she associates with, almost as if we were parents in her own stead. <laughs> I suppose this might well be the best way to describe the relationship we share. A father, mother, daughter, almost playing around in a little make-believe family as if it could last forever. Might be strange. It must be, might be a strange dynamic, and one that certainly can't last for long. But maybe just for this one small moment, it's okay. As I stand from the table and go to join Lily and Ock in the fields outside, I noted. I nod to myself in information. 
this one small moment of happiness, no matter how brief it lasts with me, with all of us forever. Oh, nice tub. Submerged deep in the hot water, I let out a drowned sigh escape. A drowned outside escape my lips. Lips. The feeling of seemingly every muscle in my body relaxed is euphoric. I have no idea how long it's been since I had genuine. I had a genuine hot bath, but right now I can hardly be bothered trying to remember. Maybe I'm giving the simple fact that for once I have to. I get to have a real bath more credit than it's due. The chance is to calm down, allow myself to unwind and have some time to myself is a welcome one. Hanako, Lily, and I wander out about outside exploring the extent of this surprising large tract of land surrounding the house. Then we spent the majority of the afternoon resting, watching television, reading, and playing on cards. It may not have been the most exciting final to the trip, but such tranquil peacefulness is something to savor. Even after we turn to school tomorrow, I think I'll remember the little house in Aikido for a long time. It's a pity we only have a couple more hours to spend here before going to get the train back. Um, going to get the train back. I have, I have a similar thing with house. We only stayed there for a week, but I remember it vividly. Uh, all I can do is yawn contentedly while I watch the steam slowly rising from the clear, water's placid surface. My eyes eventually locked onto the ceiling. Our exams are imminent. I barely studied at all for them. On top of that, I don't even know what I'll do after graduation. Passing exams is all well and good, but to what end? I have no idea what I want to do. No idea. Also now, of all times, I'm getting into a relationship. What the hell am I doing? I guess I shouldn't think like that. What's done is done, and maybe this could be viewed as just another aspect of a new life that I'm working on. I enjoyed being with Lily, and there's more to life than school and a career after all. As I busily attempt to rationalize all that's happened, I hear a series of raps on the door. I pick myself up and sit upright trying to figure out the source. There's no more and no less light yet assertive until they're tapping and timed regularly enough to tune a metronome. I'd be extremely surprised if it wasn't Lily. May I commit? Nice tub. That's a, that's a nice tub. Yeah, it's Lily. I'm still in the bath. I'll be out in a sec. I know. Enters. <laughs> the voice comes from the outside. The door freezes me. After a second thought, I rest on the side of the bath and let my arms dangle over the side. Despite trying the best to play it off, I can't help letting my mind wander. S sure, come in. It's not like she can see him naked. With that, she opens the door, slowly walking into the room and closing it behind her. She looks oddly calm, countering my facing heart. Uh, h hey, Lily. <laughs> Do you mind if I take a bath with you, Sal? I don't mind. Go ahead. A small knot, she begins to lift her sweater off her shoulder, bearing her chest little by little. I could do that for you if you'd like. <laughs> Refused. Why? Her face shows that she's still not overly comfortable letting me attend to her. I can't say I blame her. She continues undressing her sh shirt and skirt falling to the floor. Leaving her in her white lace bra and panties. Eventually, she stands bare in the center of the room. Hmm. More sex. More and more. They're they're fiddling with his alzil. What was that? What? What the shit? Whoa. Another. I love the train section. I'm just gonna say that right now. I love the train section. I like how they're drawn. Like uh, I like how Asa or Hanako is drawn, and Lily. 
after a chaotic dash to the station and finding our seats to an otherwise deserted carriage, we promptly crashed looking at the time, close to midnight. It's a little surprise to take a few takes to this particular train. Now goes fast asleep on Lily's shoulder and I can't only barely muster the energy to stay awake. The excitement we had a while ago probably didn't help. I'd probably be pretty depressed about going back to school if my brain was actually working. As it is though, the sight of the nighttime scenery scrolling by is surprisingly beautiful. The loud yawn is nearly wholly drowned out by the clacking of the train tracks as the old carriage is rattling. So tired. And I hear you, Sal. <laughs> tired. And whose fault is that, Sal? <laughs> she really does tell the line but in between insulting and amusing sometimes. Well, I managed to ring out a weary smile. I look back out at the window, my reflection just visible on the clear pane. Truth be told, she perf she's perfectly correct. If it weren't for a little interlude a few hours ago, both of us would have a lot more energy. Where did Naka go after um, Lily went into the bathroom? Just wondering. On top of that, we both have had her another bath. We both had to take another bath, very nearly making us a little for the, tr making us late for the train's departure. Yeah, yeah, it was mine. So getting into the bath with a guy is a dangerous thing to do. Evidently. Sorry, I guess I kind of took advantage of the situation back there. Well, I didn't exactly hate it. She and she as she trails off. Look back to her, my eyes narrow as I see her slightly reddened cheeks and small grin, her mind obviously elsewhere. Say it. I knew the possibility of ha it happening was there. I knew it, you're just as dirty minded as I. <laughs> she quickly coughs in her free hand, making her disapproval crystal clear. <laughs> Another cute thing. That's a rather crude way of putting it. Well, and you would suggest? I merely have a healthy adolescent sex drive. <laughs> so, in other words, dirty minded. Almost seeing the sense the moment, Nako mumbles quietly as she furls her brow in Lily's lap. Lily's look so of disapproval melts away as she dumbly smiles and strokes her hand on Nako's long dark hair. All I can do is watch and smile. If someone were to ask me when I fell in love with her, I wouldn't be able to answer. The best I'd be able to come up with is it just happened at some point, but I didn't realize it. If someone were to ask why ask me why I love her, though, then I can answer much more easily. You really love Nako, don't you? She gives a deep nod, smiling warmly. It's a pity we had to return to school. She seemed to relax so much while we were he all away. We were all away. All away. This, I don't think this is really a life changing or er, story changing moment here. Let's talk about Nako. I wouldn't worry. Nako's been gaining confidence, thanks to you. At least for as long as I've known you two. It gives a self-deprecating sigh. I think I merely provided her with company and support. Since she came to know you, she opened up much more, even to me. I get the feeling she'd understand her influence on Nako, especially given that before the two of us came to know each other, not by no friends to speak of. The friends I've had in my previous school fulfilled what I expected of them, for the most part simply being there for idle chatter, but in an awful movie, there really feels to be more than the relationship. There's part of me envies it, but another can't ignore the fact that the school year will eventually end. After graduation, I really have no idea what Hanako will do. The 
this trip has shown me just how much we've all come to depend on each other. Indeed, we're all going to have to make decisions. Maybe that's the reason why, despite our return to school, almost also heralding a return to the normalcy, normalcy of everyday life, I can't help feeling a little restless. I wonder if we went on the trip in the Nalco story, like after after the game finished, to go go on the trip. On the bright side. It won't take long for the summer holidays to arrive after our exams are finished. We can come back here during the summer holidays if you want to. For a moment she thinks on the notion, her face becoming somewhat distant. I can only guess she's reflecting on all that's happened here. That would be good, I think. I nod approvingly, smiling at her. Somewhere together with Lily, this idea seems like the perfect idea, a perfect way to spend our holiday. After the excitement of our trip to Hokkaido, it seems strange to be right back to the usual daily routine so soon. Indeed, it feels like a normal day, the same as any other. Well, that's what I thought. I'd like to think that anyway. But tell the truth, the atmosphere of the entire class, no, the entire school, has changed. While an undercurrent of the subdued trepidation had previously pervaded the class, now that the exams are in slight on site, it's boiled over the frantic studying, rarely seen otherwise. One day until the exam starts. It's horrific, really. Then instead of studying, we went to waste our time up north. We were such a model students. We were such model students, too. Glancing around the class, even the bubbly, ever energetic Misha seems oddly deflated. She sits, her de uh, she sits at her desk, nervously chewing a pen while Mattel lectures from in front of the class. Wait. On closer inspection, I do believe she's eating it. <laughs> Tear my eyes from the sorry spectacle. I turn my attention elsewhere. <laughs> Naka sits frantically scribbling, in scribbling into her notebook, her face mere inches away from the page, seemingly trying to record every word that leaves Mattel's mouth. Shizun's? Well, Shizun. Cool as a cucumber. She sits diligently taking her notes with her, attention wholly focused on the front of the class. Truth be told, it's what I should be doing as well, if not for the fact that I feel like I have a pretty good handle on what's been covered already. I wonder what how Lily's doing. Well, she does have a good head on her. She has plenty of on her plate, unlike me. Class representative duties, uh, taking care of Inako, her other social contacts, her extra English studies. The girls really it does take on a lot. The lunchtime bell brings a sigh of relief from the entire class, Mattel being no exception. I get the feeling he much prefers a late, more laid back atmosphere of his like, normal classes to the frantic pace of exam preparation we're subjected to right now. Hey Chan, help me. I lower my eyelids to half mast, making clear my intentions of doing quite the opposite. Help me, help me, help me. Not going well. Jay Chan's going to be fine, but I think I might die. Am I going to die, Chan? Will you let me die from all this work? How maudlin. Given that she's neither the brightest student in the class nor the most diligent, it isn't a great surprise that she's finding it hard to cope with a workload. Uh, sorry, Misha, but I got my own work to do. I thought you and Shizun would be studying together over the long weekend anyway. Studying is too boring to waste on a holiday. Hey Chan, sorry, shopping together was much more fun, wasn't it, Chichan? It's only now that I realize Shizun's been looking over to us. Now Misha's arms have been moving lightly as all the time. I must be really zoned out to not have noticed. What is it with girls and shopping anyways? Even Lily and Anako have dragged me out with them a couple times. But you went anyway. It's so rare to see a guy like that going shopping. 
well, a roll would be probably best described as packed meal. I can't say I share your enthusiasm about the experience. Back to exams. You studied after you got back from the days off, didn't you, Shizun? Of course, you Chan. It's only sensible to study in the days before. Oh, <sighs> Misha sounds vaguely similar to Dan Cal. And she realizes her folly and unceremoniously flops on her desk, betrayed even by her best friend. Judging from Mizun's quite frustrated look at Misha, she probably told her to study as she did. Uh, don't worry, you can still get in some marks if you start studying now. Maybe. Misha does not seem overly amused. It seems that the bubbly balloon is everlasting cheerfulness has been cruelly popped. Shizun's silence goes unnoticed by the moping Misha, hurrying her quick poke in the shoulder. It takes barely a moment for Misha to get back into form. Oh, ah, so, what did you do over the weekend, Chad? Just a trip up north with Lily and Anako. It was pretty nice. I see them both narrowing their eyes at me, their minds chilly in the gutter. The fact that their suspicions are founded makes them situation all more awkward. We just studied and went sightseeing. There's nothing more to it. Hmm? After such a flagrant lie, I realize that it may not have been the last best step. Considering Shizun's connection to her total lack of restraint, when it comes to questioning, someone she suspects of telling untruths. I really have no idea how she's going to take it, but she'll find out eventually anyway, but <laughs> it isn't as if it really really her business whom I, date, whom I date in any case and yes Lily and I are going out now oh while Misha receives the news with an enthusiastic smile Shizun gives a look of mild surprise somewhat masked by her cool demeanor whoever you date is your business I hope you'll two go well together Misha gives a look that says this is the most quarter I could possibly receive on the matter. That's all I wanted, really. After she says this, though, she soon begins to sign something else, then stops herself and shakes her head at Misha to prevent her from translating. Hmm. Normally, I'd think that's strange enough, but the awkward casual wave she soon gives before walking off with Misha is in tow adds to my confusion. Shizun's hardly the kind of person to pull a punch or communicate without forethought. I shrugged my shoulders at the duo on duo's odd behavior and looked towards Hanako's desk, but sees that the chair's empty. She was definitely here before, so I guess she just didn't feel like waiting. I'll go grab some food alone then. Walking down the hallway to the unused room that's become a second home to three students in particular. I mournfully looked down at the plastic wrapped salad roll and bo jo uh, juice box in my hand. The cafeteria food really is not appetizing. Maybe I'll consider this my penance for my recent indiscretions. Opening the door, I noticed one less quiet figure than I expected. It's strange. Despite having known Lily for months. I can't help thinking back to the very first time I opened the door and saw her silently sitting on the sunlight. Just as she did then, she slowly opens her eyes, unmoving as they are, and calmly addressing me. Good morning, Asal. It's afternoon, I think. Has an uncle been around? She's skittered out of class without even without me even noticing. Lily cradles her cheek thoughtfully as I take a seat. My bag taking its place against the closet leg of the table as my unsatisfied meal neatly set out in front of me. She did appear for a time. She said she had to study with upcoming exams and left for the library. We find ourselves not entirely believed for her words. Well, at least her intentions are in the right place. She is sweet, but she didn't needn't go this far to let us have our space. I might talk to her about it sometime. Probably for the best. For a while, we quietly eat our meals, 
Millie allegedly nibbling on her sandwiches and sipping her tea. Millie eat my taste. <laughs> um, eat what tastes like a garden sandwich and dry up dough. Ugh. The atmosphere feels slightly strained. Neither of us knowing quite what to say to each other. Not each other now that our small talk is dried up. Eventually, we both finish our food, with no conversation forthcoming for quite some time. Eventually, though, Lily's soft voice breaks the silence. A lot happened back there, didn't it? Hmm? Hmm. Again, silence. With both our minds on the same topic, though, I think I have my feelings on that sort of doubt. I know everything happened in kind of a hurry, but I don't regret anything that happened in Hokkaido. Not one thing. Sal. It's highly tense, I take her hand in mine. I have to feel her half settle my own nerves. I stand by my words back there, Lily. I love you, and I won't leave you. I only wish for you to think the same. She silently reflects for a long time, which feels like an eternity. Her revere comes to an end as she takes one hand from mine, placing it over them as she leans her body forward and stands out of their chair. After a moment's hesitation, her face slightly pensive, her lips might my, meet mine for a brief moment. <laughs> I find my mind feels as if brightly stopped at the moment, barely registering Lily sitting back in her chair and smiling back at me with ever so slightly reddening cheeks. Hearing that makes me feel ha very happy, Sal. I'd be glad to stay with you. Maybe it was good to show thing, uh, slow down things a bit compared to before. We still have school after all in our exams. She gives a mischievous giggle, which provides to be con contagious. That might be a good idea, that indeed. Do you think you'll fare well in exams? In your exams? It's only one day until they arrive, as you say. I probably should have studied more, but I think I've got a good enough head to manage. That said, I have to bat off Mishin soon. Is your class as worried about the exams as mine? She lets out an exaggerated sigh, all but confirming it. I'm thankful for the atmosphere becoming a bit lighter. I think so. I've already asked, been asked by help oh, by two of my classmates, and there will no doubt be more. Think of it as your first training in being a teacher, maybe. <laughs> That's probably a good way to think of it. On that note, how are you faring in English studies? I remember it was far from your strongest subject, and the few sentences you memorized to speak to my mother aren't likely to help. <laughs> Down right on the mark. You got me. If you don't mind, would you be able to possibly help me in that regard? Please? <laughs> It'd be my pleasure to help you, Sal, but in exchange. She lowers her eyebrow at her cockroachish nature, tentatively coming to the fore. No problem at all. You'd probably be better off with some help in your studies, though. She beams a smile at me. One of the girlish victory that nearly t makes me blush. I get the feeling she's aware of her of how uh, of how to use her face to twist my judgment. So I should probably be more on guard. She is pretty cute. Here on um, now though, a city group seems like an expedient way of bugless to shore up uh, more lacking skills. The school bell rings out reminding us that it's time to, it's it the time isn't going to stand still. It's a study date, uh, study date then. Lunch time's over already. It sure is easy to lose track of time here. The first room is so far from the other clubs and activities. Not much down can we reach us. That's probably the most the reason why. I place far from all the others alone with just one person whom she loves. As Lily stands and recollect or and collects her bags and cane. My thoughts are cast back to the time we spent in Hokkaido. Ah, before I go, Akira and I are having a homecoming party in my room tomorrow. Will you be able to come? Then, back again. My schedule is free, so I thought she'd be able to make enough room in my study. 
I should be able to make enough room in my study time to make it. Good to hear, Sal. For what it's worth, I'm glad you are back from Scotland. Once the exams are over, we should have some more time to ourselves. Hmm. Holidays start soon after, too. We're gonna start the holidays with Tanabata then, just as we promised at the school festival. She brings her hand close to her cheek and laughs slightly nervously. Recalling the event as if suddenly I thank myself for managing to remember. It seems odd to see her reaction in such a way, react in such a way, though it's not like I never saw her embarrassed before. I'd better be going. Farewell, Sal. Bye. Whether it's so out of the habit or just the stubborn desire for one such fragment of normality, I hold my hand up in the farewell just as I always do. At least, I'm consciously aware that I'm doing it now. I think I'm beginning to see a bigger picture than I ever had before. Not only with Lily, but also my life ahead. The chains of my past are finally breaking. Hmm. This is nice. Really nice.